reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 13. And the text for today is text 3 and 4. I hand over to Arya Govind Prabhu. Prabhu, can you please read the text? And if there's somebody who could help you with the reading of the Prabhupada. Okay. Uh, the Prabhupada is too long, Prabhuji, for just one person. Okay, okay. Um, yes, I think I hope somebody will uh, share. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naranchaiva Narotamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tadojam Udirai. Nashtaprayesha Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki. Hare Krishna. Srimad <coughs> Bhagavatam, first canto, 13th chapter, verse 3 to 4. Tam Bandum Agatam Drishtva Dharma Putra Saha Nuja Dhritarashtro Yudsuscha Sutta Saradvata Pritha Dhandari Draupadi Brahman Subhadra Chotara Krupi Anyascha Jamaya Pandor Nataya Sasuta Striya. <coughs> when they translation, when they saw Vidura return to the place, palace, all the inhabitants, Maharaja Yudhishthira, his younger brothers, Dhritarashtra, Satyaki, Sanjaya, Kripacharya, Kunti, Gandhari, Draupadi, Subhadra, Uttara, Kripi, many other wives of the Kauravas and other ladies with children all hurried to, to him to, in great delight. It so appeared that they had regained their consciousness after a long period. Purpured by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Savam Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gandhari, the ideal chaste lady in the history of the world. She was the daughter of Maharaja Subala, the king of Gandhara, now Khandar, Kandahar in Kabul. And in her maiden state, she worshipped Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is generally, worship, generally worshipped by Hindu maidens uh, to get a good husband. Gandhari satisfied Lord Shiva and by his benediction to obtain 100 sons, she was betrothed to Dhritarashtra. Despite his being blind forever, when Gandhari came to know that he would be husband was her would-be husband was a blind man, to follow her life companion, she decided to become voluntarily blind. So she wrapped up her eyes with many silk linings, and she was married to Dhritarashtra under the guidance of her elder brother Shakuni. She was the most beautiful girl of her time, and she was equally qualified by her womanly qualities, which endeared every member of the Kaurava court. But despite all her good qualities, she had the natural frailties of a woman, and she was envious of Kunti when the latter gave birth to a male child. Both the queens were pregnant, but Kunti first gave birth to a male child. Thus, Gandhari became angry and gave a bow to her own abdomen. As a result, she gave birth to a lump of flesh only. But since she was devotee of, she was a devotee of Vyasadeva, by the instruction of Vyasadeva, the lump was divided into 100 parts, and each part gradually developed to become a child, male child. Thus, her ambition to become the mother of 100 sons was fulfilled. And she began to nourish all the hundred, all the children according to her exalted position. When the intrigue of battle Kurukshetra of the battle of Kurukshetra was going on, she was not in favor of fighting with the Pandavas. Rather, she blamed Dhritarashtra, her husband, for such a fratricidal war. She desired that the state be divided into two parts for the sons of Pandus and her own. She was very affected when all her sons. She was very affected when her all when all her sons died in the battle of Kurukshetra and she wanted to curse Bhima Sena and Yudhishthira. But when she was checked by Vyasadeva, her mourning over the death of Duryodhana and Dushasana before Lord Krishna was very pitiful. And Lord Krishna pacified her by transcendental messages. She was equally aggrieved on the death of, death of Karna and she described Lord, to Lord Krishna the lamentation of Karna's wife. She was pacified by Srila Vyasadeva when he showed her dead sons, then promoted 
to the heavenly kingdom she died along with her husband in the jungles of the himalayas near the mouth of the ganges she burned she burned in a forest fire maharaj maharaja yudhishthira performed the death ceremony of his uncle and aunt hare krishna anyone else wants to read hare krishna prabhu ji can i read yes yes mata ji please hare krishna everyone hare krishna <laughs> prita daughter of maharaj rishana and sister of vasudev of vasudev lord krishna's father later she was adopted by maharaj kunti bhoja and hence she is known as kunti she is the incarnation of the success potency of the personality of godhead the heavenly denizens from the upper planets used to visit the, the palace of king kunti bhoja and kunti was engaged for their reception she also served the great mystic sage durvasa and being satisfied by her faithful service durvasa muni gave her a mantra by which it was possible for her to call for any demigod she pleased as a matter of inquisitiveness she at once called for the sun god who desired complement couple, with her and she declined but the sun god assured her inhumanity for virgin adulteration and she so she agreed to his proposal as a result of this supplement she became pregnant and karna was born by her by the grace of the sun she again turned into a virgin girl but being afraid of her parents she quitted the newly born child karna after that when she actually selected her own husband she preferred pandu to be her husband maharaj pandu later wanted to retire from family life and adopted the renounced order of life kunti refused to allow her husband to adopt such life but at last maharaj pandu gave her permission to become a mother of sons by calling some other suitable personalities kunti did not accept this proposal at first but when vivid examples were set by pandu she agreed thus by dint of mantra awarded by durvasa muni she called for dharam raj and thus yudhishthira was born she called for the demigod vayu air and thus bhima was born she called for indra the king of heaven and thus arjuna was born the other two sons namely nakula and jahadeva were begotten by pandu himself in the womb of madri later on maharaj pandu died at an early age for which kunti was so aggrieved that she fainted two co-wives namely kunti and madri decided that kunti should leave for the maintenance of the five minor children the pandavas and madri should accept the sati rituals by meeting voluntary death along with her husband this agreement was endorsed by great sages like satyasindhi and others present on the occasion later on when the pandavas were banished from the kingdom by the intrigues of duryodhana kunti followed her husband her sorry kunti followed her son and she equally faced all sorts of difficulties during those days during the forest life one demon girl hidimba wanted bhima as her husband bhima refused but when the girl approached kunti and yudhishthira they ordered bhima to accept her proposal and give her a son as a result of this combination katokach was born and he fought very valiantly with his father against kauravas in the forest life they lived with the brahmana family that was in trouble because of one bakasura demon and kunti ordered bhima to kill the bakasura to protect the brahmana family against trouble created by the demon she advised yudhishthira to start for the panchala desh tropadi was gained in this panchala desh by arjuna but by order of kunti all five of the pandavas brother brothers became equally the husbands of panchali or tropadi this was married she was married with five pandavas in the presence of jasadeva kunti devi never forgot her first child karna and after karna's death in the battle of kurukshetra she lamented and admitted before her other sons that karna was her eldest son prior to her marriage with maharaj pandu her prayers for the lord after the battle of kurukshetra when lord krishna was going back home are uh, excellently explained later she went to the forest with gandhari for severe penance she used to take meals after each 30 days she finally sat down in profound meditation and later burned to ashes in a forest fire drupadi the most chaste daughter of maharaj drupada and partly an incarnation of goddess sachi the wife of indra 
Mara Drupad, performing breast sacrifice under the superintendence of the sage Yaja. By his first offering, Drista Dumna was born, and by the second offering, Drupadi, Drupadi was born. She is therefore the sister of Drista Dumna, and she is also named Panchali. The five Pandavas married her as a common wife, and each of them begot a son in her. Maharajudi still begot a son named Pratibhi, Binsena begot a son named Sutosoma, Arjuna begot Sutakriti, Nakula begot San Satanati Nika, and Sahadeva begot Sutta Karma. She is described as a most beautiful lady, equal to her mother in law Kunti. During her birth, there was an arrow message that she, she should be called Krishna. The same message also declared that she was born to kill many chatriyas. By dint of her blessings from by dint of her blessings from, sorry, from Shankara, she was awarded five husbands equally qualified. When she was when she preferred to select her own husband, princes and kings were invited from all the countries of the world. She was married with the Pandavas during their exile in the forest. But when she went back home, Maharaj Drupada gave them immense wealth as a dowry. She was well received by all the daughters in law of Dhrishrasa. When she was lost in a gambling game, she was forcibly dragged into the assembly hall, and an attempt was made by Dushashana to see her naked beauty. Even though there were elderly persons like Bhima, but like Bhishma and Drona present. She was a great devotee of Lord Krishna, and by her praying, uh, the Lord himself became an unlimited garment to save her from the insult. A demon of the name Jatashura kidnapped her, but her second husband, Bhimsena, killed the demon and saved her. She saved the Pandavas from the curse of Maharaj Durvasa by the grace of Lord Krishna. When the Pandavas lived incognito in the palace of Virada, um, it took her was at attracted by her exquisite beauty and by arrangement with Bhima, the devil was killed and she was saved. She was very much aggrieved when her five sons were killed by Asatama. At that last stage, she accompanied her husband Yudhisthira and others and fell on the way. The cause of her falling was explained by Yudhisthira, but when Yudhisthira entered the heavenly planet, he saw Drupadi gloriously present there as a goddess of fortune in the heavenly planet. Subhadra, daughter of, of, of Vasudeva, the sister of Lord Sri Krishna. She was not only a very dear daughter of Vasudeva, but also a very dear sister of both Krishna and Baladeva. The two brothers and, and sister are represented in the famous Jagannath temple of Puri. And the temple is still visited by thousands of pilgrims daily. This temple is in remembrance of the Lord's visit at Kurukshetra during an occasion of solar eclipse and his subsequent meeting with a resident of Vrindavana. The meeting of Radha and Krishna during this occasion is a very pathetic story. And Lord Sri Chaitanya, in the static of Radharani, in the aesthetic of Radharani, always pinned for Lord Sri Krishna at Jagannath Puri. While Arjuna was at Dwarka, he wanted to have Subhadra as his queen, and he expressed his desire to Lord Krishna. Sri Krishna knew that his elder brother, Lord Baladev, was arranging her marriage elsewhere. And since he did not dare to go against the arrangement of Baladeva, he advised Arjuna to kidnap Subhadra. So when all the, of them were on a pleasure trip on the Raivata hill, Arjuna managed to kidnap Subhadra according to the plan of Sri Krishna. Sri Baladeva was very angry at Arjuna and he wanted to kill him. But Lord Krishna implored his brother to excuse Arjuna. Then Subhadra was duly married with Arjuna and Abhimanyu was born of Subhadra. At the premature death of Abhimanyu, Subhadra was very mortified, but on the birth of Parikshit, she was, she was happy and solaced. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Prabhu, we hand over to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. All Hare. glories to our ISKCON founder, Chari. His divine grace says he bought to be done to Swami, Sri Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to have your association and 
try and be of some service. So we are continuing our study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, the text 3 and 4, which is uh, entitled Dhritarashtra, Quits Home. So his half-brother Vidura has returned from a long pilgrimage. Dhritarashtra's son Duryodhana had thrown Vidura out of the palace, out of the Kuru family, because he didn't like uh, how Vidura was uh, helping the Pandavas and didn't seem to be helping him. Which uh, we can appreciate is uh, an example of uh, tamagun or the mode of ignorance, the mode of passion in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, in the 14th chapter, the modes of material nature, the different qualities of the modes, uh, different uh, types of character that people have uh, within the different modes of nature are described. And in the 16th chapter, which is entitled The Divine and Devaniac Natures, Lord Krishna gives a lot of detail, the different uh, characteristics of people who are of demonic nature and divine nature. So it is described, as we may, re may remember, about Sattva Guna. Then in Sattva Guna, one understands things as they are. One sees things for what they really are. In the mode of passion, the tendency is to accept what is immediately pleasing, what is immediately profitable, and to reject or deny other things. Very often, uh, people, uh, it's called cutting corners. They take shortcuts to do something because uh, they're in a hurry. And sometimes it's necessary. Uh, but other times, really, uh, we're cutting corners, we're, we're taking shortcuts because we're very passionate to enjoy the uh, results of the activity as soon as possible. Uh, but this is due to the mode of passion. Really, the, the fact is one should not be taking these shortcuts. Perhaps someone is driving very, very fast. They want to get home to watch something on the telly. <laughs> that they really want to see, uh, but it's dangerous. But they're so passionate. Uh, we could say their brain isn't working quite right. Because the fact is, they, should, they shouldn't be driving so fast. And there are so many things, I'm sure many of us can think of uh, people we have seen or even our own self doing things uh, uh, because uh, in a hurry. We're in a hurry to enjoy the benefits. Sometimes people lie because it's convenient. It helps them to uh, get what they want, so they lie. So this is bending the truth. So on the left side, we have reality. And then on the right side, we have the different emotions, right? Different feelings. Uh, and very, we know as humans that our feelings uh, uh, unfortunately, our thinking can be very much influenced by the different feelings. We feel very angry, uh, depressed, uh, very, very happy even, uh, very lustful, greedy, envious. Sometimes people will do something out of envy or hate. They see someone with a brand new car, they'll take a key and scratch it because they just hate the fact the person has a brand new car. So we, we, we humans, we are, uh, our uh, clear thinking can be uh, diverted. So Duryodhana, he was upset that Vidura was helping the Pandavas. Actually, that was a very good thing if Duryodhana was in his right mind. 
he would be happy. Oh, this, yes, the Pandavas, they are good people, they are devotees, you are helping them. This is a good thing. But because he was uh, very attached uh, to the wrong side of the coin, uh, he's very attached to power and position and influence. He was very angry at Vidura and he threw Vidura out. So Vidura returned finally and everyone was coming to greet him. Uh, even Dhritarashtra and Yurodhana, they at least pretended to appreciate his coming back. And in the purport, we hear descriptions uh, of uh, some of these personalities, uh, mostly the great devotees, Gandhari, uh, Prita, and who was also known as Kunti, and Draupadi, who was married to by Pandavas, uh, and Subhadra, the sister of Lord Krishna, who was married to Arjuna. And uh, then Abhimanyu was born, and from Abhimanyu, Maharaj Parikit. And we know Maharaj Parikit is the one who was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. We just heard in the last chapter about Maharaj Parikit. So the, the Pandavas, uh, they have very close connection and description in this Srimad Bhagavatam. Does anyone remember? Does anyone, uh, has anyone heard what, uh, what the definition is in English of Srimad Bhagavatam? What does that mean, Srimad Bhagavatam? Well, Sri is connected to beauty and opulence, just like the goddess of fortune is Sri. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srila Prabhupada has described as Srimad Bhagavatam is the beautiful story of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when we hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we will hear about his um, transcendental name and pastimes, uh, qualities. And just like any other great person, we will hear about their associates. A king is always surrounded by different ministers and servants. So wherever Lord Krishna is uh, visibly manifest or in the spiritual world, he is always surrounded by so many loving devotees. So we offer, uh, uh, it has been a prayer has been given to us, which we say to glorify Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahavadinaya Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Name Gora Tushe Nam. We offer respectful obeisances. This is a prayer from Srila Rupa Goswami hundreds of years ago, uh, offering obeisances unto Lord Chaitanya who is the Maho, uh, Mahavadin Avatar. Uh, Badanya is uh, mercy, and Maha is great. Mahavadinaya uh, Avatar, the avatar of divine mercy and kindness. The Maho Mahavadinaya Krishna Prema Pradaya. He has come to give Pradaya. Pradaya means to give. So Krishna Prema. He has come to give Krishna Prema. And he is supremely uh, merciful and he is in a magnanimous. He likes to give. So, Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne, Gura Tushe Namaha. So, this incarnation of Lord Krishna, he is not blackish, uh, he is gold in color, and he is always speaking about Krishna. So Panchatattva Bakam Krishna, Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Avatadam Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakti Shaktika. Another prayer, but this one given by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, offering respects to the five members of the Panchatattva. 
And pancha we know is five, and tattva is truth. So five uh, manifestations of the absolute truth. Pancha tattva bhakam krishna, bhakta rupa sarupaka. So there is, who wants to name the different uh, members of Sri pancha tattva? We can all take a turn. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Ravi Nityananda, Sri Adhita Vidadhara, Sri Vansadi Gorabhati. And who? Very good. So who would like to describe, say something about each one? Well, we can take turns. Hare Krishna. Who are you? Sri Vans. Sri Vans. He is an incarnation of Narad Muni because Narad Muni could not bear separation from the Lord when the Lord left. So when, when he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so Sri Vas uh, Acharya, he came to take part in the, um, uh, in the Leela, in the pastime of the Lord. And uh, Sri Vas uh, recently, uh, myself and Kritika, we were very lucky to have a static kirtan and dancing in the angan of Srivasa in India two three Very weeks good. ago. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Someone else can say something about one of the members? Of... Advaita Acharya uh, is an incarnation of Mahavishnu and Lord Shiva combined. And uh, Advaita Acharya, um, he worshipped uh, uh, <coughs> Saligrama Shila intensely to for the Mahaprabhu to appear. And then he was uh, a, a, a elderly in age to Mahaprabhu. And then he was always uh, uh, close to Mahaprabhu. Thank you. Someone else? Sri Gadadhar Pandit. He is incarnation of Radharani. And he wanted to be with Krishna. And when he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gadadhar Pandit descended as well, and he stayed right from the childhood until Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left. He just followed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu everywhere, and he stayed um, in Jagannath Puri. Good. Very nice. And one more. Yeah. Nityananda is the incarnation of Balram. Nityananda Hamdami, Sarvakaram, uh, he is, uh, what is that, Nityananda, uh, Nityananda, who is that, uh, Nityananda Hamdami, Sarva, Sarvananda Karam Param, Harinama Pradam Devam, Avaduta Sharomani. So he is uh, in the mood of an Avaduta, and as you mentioned, at the incarnation of Lord Balaram. And he is also uh, very, very merciful, even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya. So Panchatattva Makam Krishna, Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam, Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam, Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam. So why speak about Lord Chaitanya if we are, this is all about Krishna? Uh, there are many persons who know about Radha and Krishna and Lord Brahm, but they uh, may never have heard of Lord Chaitanya. Well, who was this Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda? So we are we are in this line. This is why this is why I'm bringing this up. To uh, we are hearing about these different personalities, these pure devotees of Lord Krishna, the associates, uh, Queen Kunti, uh, Queen Draupadi, Subhadra, Vidura, uh, Bhima. So, Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. Lord Chaitanya has come to distribute Krishna Prema in the Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Sampradaya. Who remembers what Sampradaya means? What, what is Sampradaya? Disciplic succession. What is it? Disciplic succession. An unbroken specific succession of spiritual teachers. Yeah. Yes. 
So there are four sampradayas, actually, four vice, there are five. There are four Vaishnav Sampradayas or lines of teachers uh, of devotion to Lord Krishna. And there is a fifth Sampradaya, which is uh, the Shankara Sampradaya, which is the very spiritual minded uh, people, but they are devoted to the impersonal nature of spirit. So there are four Vaishnav uh, Sampradayas, and we are uh, each headed by uh, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, uh, the four, four Kumaras, and uh, Goddess Lakshmi. So we are in the line of Lord Brahma, Brahma, Madhva, Godia Sampradaya. So Brahma, uh, Lord Brahma, and Madhva means Madhva Charya, who was on this planet. Uh, in the 1200s in South India and he established many temples devoted to Lord Krishna and he is uh, one of the main uh, well they're all acharyas who have given again who have made available the eternal science of Bhakti devotion. So, uh, Lord Krishna, Lord Brahma, Srila Vyasade, Madhvacharya. So, from Madhvacharya, there were a number of spiritual masters, all the way down to one named Lakshmi Pati. And Lakshmi Pati gave a spiritual initiation to uh, Advaita Acharya. Uh, and Madhavendra Puri, from Madhavendra Puri, uh, he gave initi initiation to Ishwara Puri. Uh, some of us may know these names, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri gave uh, spiritual initiation to uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is our historical connection to the Brahma Madhva Sakra. The other Sampradayas, there's, uh, some of us may have heard of them, the Ramanuja Sampradaya, uh, who are especially devoted to Lord Vishnu. There are many, many Vishnu temples in South India, mostly, uh, founded by the followers of Ramanuja. The Vishnu Swami, headed by Lord Shiva, uh, and uh, the Nimbarka Sampradaya, uh, headed by the four Kumaras. All devotees of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but down through Madhva Acharya and uh, Madhavendra Puri and Ishwara Puri came a special, a special gift, which is not present very much in the other sampradayas, which is divine Raja Bhakti or devotion to Krishna. Uh, as uh, two-armed, two-legged, peacock feather uh, in the hair. Venam konantam aravinda dalaya taksham barhavatam samasitam bodhisundarangam kandarapa kota kamaniya vishesha shobham govindam adipurushan tamaham This special Devotion to Lord Krishna, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his most sweet and special and fullest manifestation. It is uh, tremendously more present in this Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampadaya, starting with Madhavendra Puri and Ishwar Puri and the Panchata. So this is this is our specific Sampadaya our specific line of, of bhakti, of Krishna bhakti, which contains uh, all the different types of bhakti which are present in the other sampradayas and uh, something uh, to some extent not present in the other sampradayas or, and or uh, tremendously more present uh, is devotion to Lord Krishna in uh, 
the Sakya Rasa, the Vatsalya Rasa, the Madhurya Rasa, uh, as a friend of Lord Krishna, uh, in the mood of his parents, in the mood of a uh, female lover or wife. So Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate, he came to give uh, most special, special uh, devotion to Lord Krishna. And he was giving it freely to everyone. No qualification needed to at least start on the path. One could be the, uh, coming from the most fallen of sinful backgrounds. And Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas, uh, and the followers of Sri Panchatattva were very enthusiastic, are, in very, are enthusiastic uh, to make the opportunity of this Vraja Bhakti available to everyone, which uh, some devotees of Lord Krishna uh, don't understand. Uh, whether they're part of one of the other sampradayas or not. There is, uh, as there is all over the world, uh, within the uh, Vaishnav religion, there's also uh, elements, there are some sections of uh, um, prejudice, prejudice and bigotry. And uh, just like in Jagannath Puri, no Westerners are allowed to see Lord Krishna. Although Lord Krishna says uh, that I am Aham Savasir Prabhava, Bhatta Savam Prabhati. Although I'm the source of everything. I am uh, the source of India and I'm the source of America. <laughs> uh, Lord Krishna says Aham Bija Prada Pita. I am the seed giving father of everyone. Whether those persons are born in uh, Kolkata or Mumbai, uh, or they are born in New York uh, or France or wherever. Lord, we are all a part and parcel of Lord Krishna. It's very basic Bhagavad Gita. In the uh, 15th chapter, Lord Krishna says, what is that? My uh, Vamsho Jiva Loka Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. That everyone is my part and parcel. Not people who were just born in Brahmin families. You know? Everyone is part of me. Such a simple thing. But the way, as we were talking about before, our human minds are, uh, can be too much influenced by different emotions and uh, feelings. We get, uh, we get habituated to a certain thinking pattern. Just like if you're born in South India and or anywhere, any religion, uh, your family has certain views. I think many of us can appreciate our parents, our grandparents, our uncles are in the neighborhood. There's a certain way of thinking. And uh, it's an, it's, it, the tendency is to think like that. And it can be difficult sometimes to think beyond that. That how can these Westerners be devotees of Krishna? You know, they're not Indian. They're, they're, not, they're not part of a Brahmin, Brahminical family. So this is all understandable. But uh, it's not right. It's actually a kind of ignorance. So Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahavadanaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, he came to break down all these caste uh, divisions, all the different false divisions because of the bodily concept of life. All the bigotry and prejudice is due to the bodily concept of life. So many, uh, well, all of passion and ignorance is because of the bodily concept of life, uh, which is why it's so important for us, uh, for all of us, to not think that we've gone beyond understanding that we are not these bodies. It is very important to repeatedly uh, hear Bhagavad Gita and hear about the basic philosophy uh, that I am not Indian, I'm not a man, I'm not English, I'm not French, I'm not Kenyan, I'm not black, I'm not white, I'm none of these things. I'm not overweight, 
I don't have a big nose. All of these things, uh, they are because of thinking that we are this body. This person's black, this person's white. This person is a Brahmin, this person's not a Brahmin. Uh, when, we, when we catch our mind thinking in that way, then we can know we need, we need to hear about the basic spiritual philosophy uh, more. It's very, very important. Uh, the types of desires that we have, the kind of thoughts that go through our mind, the values that we have, it's just like a dial. You turn the knob, like when you have a volume, you turn it up, you turn it down. So according to how much we are thinking, really, uh, because we all have, I know I do, there's always some, uh, something left of thinking in terms of our body. It's just natural. And we've been doing it for many, many births. And sometimes we like the bodily concept of life. You know, we like, oh, uh, we are the, we are blacks and we are all black or we are all white or we are all Hindu. Uh, it can be a kind of comfort to our mind or a way of what do they say, a power trip. We are the best. We have the best cricket team. Sometimes when a cricket team wins, right? People will say, we won. <laughs> what does that mean? We won. You didn't win. You weren't even there. What, what are you talking about? And people are at the pub and they're all excited and happy or they're sad. They go to work the next day. Oh, we lost. What did you lose? You weren't even at the soccer. What are you talking about? But people identify. When we watch some a movie and one of the characters is getting hurt or they're being abused or whatever it may be, we identify. Sometimes we even cry because we identify uh, with what's with the with the person. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came, uh, the Pantatattva came to uh, to destroy, to uh, to remove uh, the bodily concept of life from the fallen souls to remove the misunderstanding that there's something other than Krishna or the misunderstanding that there's no Krishna. Uh, they came to uh, eliminate the, the ignorance that there's no happiness besides this body. So very uh, specific uh, goals and as devotees, in the line of Lord Chaitanya, we will find that Krishna will work in our life in such a way that we become more and more free of these misconceptions. It's something that we should know. It's going to happen. <laughs> Just like if you take on a coach uh, for teaching you tennis, they're going to teach you how to play tennis. That, that's what the coach plans to do. And that's what you signed up for. Teach me to play tennis or soccer, whatever it is, play the piano. Can you imagine someone is uh, being taught how to play the piano by a teacher and they forget that that's, what, that's what's happening? <laughs> so they would become very confused. That, Why are you making me practice all this on the piano? Oh, because that's, what, that's what's happening here. So in the same way as devotees of Krishna, Krishna, whether we know it or not, Krishna, Lord Chaitanya, they are uh, planning and plotting and arranging our life, my life, your life, uh, so that gradually we all become more and more free of the bodily concept of life. We become free of the misunderstanding that the only happiness is from this body, uh, that there's nothing but Krishna. So that's what, so when different things happen in our life, there is a purpose behind them, uh, a number of purposes, but this is a reason behind whatever happens that Krishna is, is somehow, somehow this will help me to become free of the bodily concept of life. Now, just suppose you're working 
and you have a supervisor or a manager who's very annoying, they just, they just act in a way which is anyone would agree. This is a very annoying, bothersome manager. So Krishna has put you with that manager, has allowed that to happen so you can practice becoming tolerant. So you can practice rising above the bodily concept of life and being so disturbed by tiny little bitty bitty things. In the bodily concept of life, we get very bothered by little things. It is said that one of the prime characteristics of someone of Shudra consciousness is that they're, they're, they lament a lot. I don't have this, I don't have that. This happened, that happened, bah, bah, but just, it's, it's almost like their whole, that's their mood, is lamenting. So this is one of the qualities of, of the lower modes of nature. It's just uh, so many little things are bothered so that we can understand that, oh, I am going deeper into the mode of ignorance. I need to do something to improve uh, my consciousness because I can see that <laughs> I'm uh, slipping down. So Lord Chaitanya has come, Sri Pantatattva has come. Lord Krishna is active in our life, especially when we take initiation from our spiritual master, uh, when we are very seriously devoted to the practices of Krishna consciousness. Uh, Krishna is and will uh, arrange things so that we become revived in full pure devotion. So uh, we are very, very, I, I wanted to say that we are very, very fortunate, you and me, all of us, we are very fortunate to be part of this particular Sampradaya uh, and connected to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, our ISKCON founder, Acharya, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who is the 17th disciplic representative from uh, Sri Panchatattva from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And just see, here we are today. You know, so much, so many talking, but here we are today, right? I'm here, you're here, and we are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, which is all about Krishna Bhakti. And we are hearing very, uh, very many details about pure devotees of Krishna, such as Draupadi, and uh, Gandhari, and Bhima, and Arjuna, and Dhruva Maharaj, and Prahlad Maharaj. And so many pure devotees. Sometimes uh, people, devotees ask, well, where are, where are pure devotees? Well, one thing is for sure. If you want the association of pure devotees, we will find them whenever we want them uh, in the transcendental pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I'll stop here and we can have some discussion. Thank you very much for allowing me to uh, be involved in Krishna Kata. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. <clears throat> Us Hare Krishna. Now. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Very nice class. I'm sorry I have to leave now. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Mataji, for reading the prophet. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions or comments? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, I was just remembering the past time uh, of uh, His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj when, uh, when the freedom fight uh, struggle was going on in India and then Subhash Chandra Bose uh, approached him uh, because he had a uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, the disciple following and that he wanted uh, maharaj to ask, i mean uh, give give the people for freedom fighting then he asked one question that if you die in the in this battle and then if you are born in a british family in a in, in united kingdoms will you support india or will you support united kingdom <laughs> so that was uh, so he just he just left you know but he he said i'm i'm deeply connected to country so I cannot, I cannot connect to this movement at the moment. So he just uh, left that place. So that was, I, I, I mean, 
since we're talking about bodily concept of life. So I thought sharing that. Thank you. Yes. Krishna, are there any other questions or comments? <clears throat> so, Uji, I learned today that we are the uh, Srila Prabhupada is the 17th uh, disciplinic succession. So, uh, I, I know the disciplinic succession, but from Brahma to Srila Prabhupada, it is 17th. So that is something new that I learned today. So thank you very much for that, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, would that 17th succession, there would be in the middle some, some um, Acharyas or whatever, but they are not included as Acharya, but they are still carrying on the, the disciplic succession. But the number 17, that, they are the mains, or the few main people who have carried yes. on this succession? Yes, is that the right yes. understanding? Yes, yes, yes. Chief, chief. Chief, okay. Yeah, especially that they, they set a particular striking, brilliant example uh, and, and or they uh, refresh the teachings. They're just like Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakura. He wrote over 100 books of bhakti. He wrote commentaries on Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to some extent in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, so also did Chita Bhakti Siddhanta. Because Lord Krishna says, right? Uh, what is that? Parichanaya Sadhanam Panashya Tritaskritam. You know, I come to deliver the pious and reestablish religious principles. So that's what the pure devotees of Lord Krishna do. And, and we can understand by devotees' activities uh, uh, their significance. Someone who was translating and, and uh, expressing again the eternal teachings in a grand way, uh, like Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the Six Goswamis, uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, they are obviously very, very special souls. Now, you know, it is good to remember that just because uh, uh, a particular devotee is not writing books or traveling around the world preaching, then necessarily their devotion to Krishna is uh, very much less. Uh, although uh, in, in general, it is true that someone who has good character and is following the, the practices and who is doing significant uh, missionary work is in general, we can understand is a very specially empowered soul. Krishna Shakti uh, is uh, empowered by Lord Krishna. But there are, there are, there certainly are very, very pure devotees of Krishna who may stay in Jagannath Puri or Vrindavan or anywhere. And they are very, very full of love of God. It's just somehow not Krishna's plan that they uh, do something more than that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some other questions or discussion? Prabhu, can I ask you about the Panchatattva, the, the Panchatattva Mukham Krishnam, that um, um, verse? Is it to be recited during the deity worship? Or is it not? Yeah, true? usually it, it is part of the deity worship. Uh, if you look in the in the ISKCON uh, manual of deity worship, uh, in almost all the pujas, it's one of the standard prayers. Uh, yeah, Panchatattva. It's there in the, I think it's, I don't know, the first or the second chapter of Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yes, but is it only for like when you are worshiping Gaurnitai or is it uh, included for any of the like Radha Krishna or? Well, I, I don't I don't remember specifically, uh, but certainly for Lord Chaitanya and before, of course, we say the uh, Mangala Archana before any deity worship. You know the Bandeham Shigaru Shita. Yeah. 
I don't remember specifically if that prayer is part of it. Yes, of course, we can chant it anytime. Anytime that we can say prayers to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, we should. Uh, the more, the better. Because, uh, you know, I touched upon the fact that there are many persons, devotees, especially of Indian background, who know of Radha Krishna, but they're not familiar with it. Why do I have to worship Lord, Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda? And perhaps some of them don't. Uh, they may be so progressed, but it can't hurt. And it will certainly help. It will certainly help, especially those who are not, uh, who weren't born in a family of Krishna devotees. Uh, in fact, uh, the Srila uh, Prabhupada and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta say, said that more important than chanting Hare Krishna in the very beginning is chanting uh, mantras of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda because it will purify us of offenses. There's no difference between the name uh, of Sri Goranga and Sri Nityananda and Hare Krishna, except there's no, you can't make offense if you say Jai Sri Goranga, Jai Sri Nityananda, but you can make offense in chanting Hare Krishna. So will it be a good idea to chant this uh, Panchatattva Mukham before we start chanting Hare Krishna? Every yeah, morning. I mean, it's not something to be instituted in the, in the temple as an ISKCON practice, but we are definitely encouraged to, to uh, yes, to offer prayers before chanting uh, in our own private chant. Srila Prabhupada has instructed like that. For each of us, we may be attracted to a different, I like that one myself, Panchatattva, uh, Makam Krishna. We offer obeisances to all five members of the Panchatattva. I think it is there though, uh, in the Bandeham Shiguru Shita Padakamalam Shiguru and Vaishnavamscha. Uh, they are all there also. It is said that one should think about what one is doing. I mean, uh, what the mantra is, what the purpose is, as far as possible. There are a few different main mantras for chanting before uh, Hare Krishna. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Puna Shuddha Nitya Muktam Vidatram Nami Nami Glorifying uh, Krishna, helping us to remember the potency of the Holy Name. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, but especially prayers to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Okay, thank you. On the same note, <clears throat> even when we are offering uh, Hoga to the deities, we first go through the Guru and then uh, the Panchatattva, and then we offer. So I, I guess for the deity worship, it would be the same because um, you have to ask permission. You have to ask your Guru's um, uh, mercy that he allows you to um, uh, let uh, you offer the Boga or to worship the deity probably. I mean, I'm just thinking aloud. I, I, I really do not know the rules and regulations. Yes, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, because they are so keen on giving Krishna Prema to everyone, perhaps not as keen in, in giving a Mercedes or something, but if we, if we uh, can somehow get a little faith and enthusiasm and pray to them to, oh, somehow if I could have a desire to desire to desire love of Krishna, please help me. They will, they'll be very quick to grant that prayer. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if we have no questions or comments, we can end the session. Uh, we've been exceeded by a minute, so I'm sorry about that. Are I can't, I can't, I can't help it. But as I have said in the past, I mean, just look at me. <laughs> My grandparent would say there'll be no talk of God in this house. <laughs> so, so, so how is this possible? <laughs> There's something magical going on. <laughs> That's true. That's really true, Prabhupada. 
Are you going to? Is it possible for you to end the session, please, Hare Krishna? Yes, Prabhu. Because of uh, Prabhupada's mercy, and then uh, I, uh, everyone's mercy in the sampradaya, we are sitting here and talking about these transcendental topics. Otherwise, uh, for me, uh, I was also. I mean, I'm born in the both in South India. Was born in a Brahmin family, but coming from Madhva Sampradaya, the original Madhva Sampradaya, but had left everything. I had left even, you know, I had started, uh, you know, uh, and taking uh, alcoholic drinks. So, but uh, by the mercy of uh, Lord Chaitanya and by the mercy of Prabhupada and it's gone, uh, because we had, I had to come back to this path. But otherwise I had completely, you know, there was not no connection to the, uh, you know, Sampradaya. So, <laughs> Uh, 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 we have to be grateful uh, for all these uh, uh, sampradayas. Thank you, Krishna. Yeah. Yes, yes. And of course, we all I, I have want, our stories. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, especially in Madhu Sampradaya, Radharani's uh, uh, message is not there because it's it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I think because of time, place, and circumstances, Madhvacharya did not reveal uh, this uh, aspect of the uh, bhakti, and. Uh, so, and slowly but surely, in the in the in the later uh, uh, in the in the sampradaya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had to appear and then reveal this and then uh, take it take it further. Thank you, thank you, Prabhuji, for this wonderful uh, uh, class and then importance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the panchatattva in in our lineage and then uh, it is very important and then you you really insist, I mean uh, insisted on that. Thank you, Prabhu, Hare Krishna. So. I kindly request everyone to unmute and then chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, glorification of uh, His Grace uh, Dinasharan Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. His grace, Dina Sharan Prabhu ki jai. Hare Krishna, nice to be with you. Thank you for seeing everyone next week. Yes, Prabhu. Happy Gaura Purnima Prabhuji. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, uh, I had sent uh, the, the revised.